So I finally found time to sit down and watch the Thousand Year Blood War Core 2 of the Bleach Blu-ray after it being out for quite a while so I can sit down and give my honest opinions on this and whether I think the corrections are good or not. And it has mixed opinions, I'm not going to lie. Of course with this Blu-ray there's a lot of information in regards to interviews and certain character designs but I will say before I kind of jump into that, uh, I will do a separate video on that and I am very disappointed with all the Quincy girls having their own Volstan standings and it's all anime original content which is all fine and dandy. When I went to the Bleach exhibit it, they showed that Bambietta's zombified Volstandig and they didn't include it within the corrections and they didn't include it within Core 2 and they didn't even include it within the Blu-ray special booklet either so I don't know why they kind of I guess ignored that but I will show it on screen right here and it's a shame because it's one of Kubo's visions and why they didn't include it within the booklet or in the anime is beyond me but we'll probably talk about that in the next video when we talk about the interviews perhaps. But let's get into the comparisons, what we like and what we don't like and of course hit that like and subscribe if you like all these type of videos and to be updated on the next video please hit that bell notification as well and as always people let's get into it shall we? So considering that my PC can't handle doing renderings of very high definition video of multiple episodes of gigabytes at a time, we're just going to show GIFs and hopefully you, you can get the point because it's just easier and more efficient for me. And yes, I did try and look back at the scene of Bambietta and the sex scene hoping that there would have been something a little bit more. I don't know why, but there wasn't. But yeah, in regards to episode one, there was literally nothing changed at all. And if there was, it was like literally the bare minimum. So I'm going to show you these screenshots and then I'm pretty much going to give my thoughts afterwards about what I genuinely think. But for now, I'm just going to go through episode for episode. And as you can see right now, this episode in episode two is not really that much incredible. You're going to hear pretty much the same thing over and over again of just like tiny enhancements. But I will say the Basby Toshiro fight was nicely affected and gave that, that ice and that little bit of heat a little bit more, I guess, flair, so to say. Soy fun, not so much, but that sequence was all okay anyway, and I never had a complaint in the original regardless. And you have the enhancements of Rangiku's ashes as well, which is also a nice little touch. And little corrections too, such as you'll see later on Shinji's uh, sword, but also BG9's little antenna uh, tentacle things uh, there's a bit of a misdrawing there now i believe this is from episode three again more highlights on toshiro and his eyes they really did go the extra mile with the ice and then of course as well we had shinji's bankai which i for one like many others were hoping that they were going to add a little bit more additions and i believe maybe i said it in my live reaction that i was hoping that shinji's bankai was going to be a little bit more touched upon and i'll get to that rant at the end of this video but they do change it I ain't gonna lie, they do acknowledge that it needed to be changed. Is it better? Sure, it's better. Is it what you want? N not really. But, uh, on to the next thing. Then we get onto the episode with Master Maskin and, and his fight with Renji Ibarai. Now, these are some interesting changes, some outfit or attire changes. These are probably the most changes that we've seen throughout a character design level throughout the majority of the series, unless we get to like 24 and 25, or is it 26? I can't remember. That, that's where the majority of the changes go. For some reason, the two best episodes within the arc, you know, arguably had the most changes to them, if that makes sense. But this one, Mask's outfit gets changed. And let's be honest, a lot of you didn't even notice, but it is a nice touch. I will say the attention to detail is uh, very much appreciated and uh, I do like it quite a lot. And as I said before, Shinji's sword gets extended. It looks like it's behind rubble, but this time it's at the front. And of course, you also see particles with Bambietta as well, which again is a nice added flair. And again, more darker colors in the background with the lights being more flared up with extra sparkly bits as well. Well. And as well, Shinji having more dust around him makes it seem more, it's more three-dimensional uh, rather than it being something that looks like it's very far away. So it's little things like that. Though throughout this episode, I would not really say there's anything really notable other than realistically Shinji's Bankai and that is like only notable because like it's very like hard to miss uh, but the majority of stuff is just like extra lighting extra particle effects and smoke and just directional lighting which makes things a little bit better and a bit more appealing to the eyes no real art corrections going on here though now we go into Kampachi and Gremi now again a repeating occurrence you're going to see throughout the majority of these comparisons is that there's just more details whether it be to effects whether it be the background or you know clashes of swords giving extra like sparks and stuff like that however there is one episode that i will say in this entire besides like 
the last two episodes with Yuha versus Ichibe. Those episodes, they're great in terms of corrections. But I will say, I do quite like episode 21, which is, uh, or episode 20, it's Ichigo versus the Bambis, and I'll explain why when we come to that. But the Kampachi versus Grammy Fire, as you can see, there's not really much changing going on here. I mean, you will see lighting and shading difference with Yachiru on some of them, especially like the swords. But again, it's all like effects based. And I mean, that's fine because I, I do think with Kampachi versus Grammy, even though it is very much one to one in concept, and I am very disappointed that there wasn't more. Or at the bare minimum, one-to-one -one with good art is all you can ask for. And I do think Gremi had a lot of fluidity, but I think it was, like, effects-based in terms of, like, Gremi versus Compatio because you're just throwing things, explosions, lava, water, you're throwing all those things, and it is mainly effects. And, you know, they put a bit of blur on the guns, expected, a bit of detail on the rocks, a bit of extra rubble, stuff like that. It adds a little bit of spice to that already nice chicken katsu curry. I don't know what, what comparison I was going for, but it adds a little bit of like, it's just, it's just a little bit of like seasoning. And it's quite nice, I would say. I, I wouldn't say the episode was bad by any means of the stretch of the imagination. So there isn't really much to change. I think my favorite is probably seeing these water droplets when Kampachi comes down and also the, the water droplets from the rain hitting the surface. I think those are very nice touches and I think those are my favorite out of all of them because it does look very cinematic. Other than that, everything else is kind of bog standard and nothing that I would truly notice. But I will say in some scenes, lighting, does really matter and you don't really appreciate it until you see the comparison such as like the hand of Grammy's coming down on Kampachi and seeing the shadow it really does show that extra bit of detail and that lighting or that dark lighting was hiding a lot of that detail that is nice and before I go on to Ichigo versus the Bambis I do want to say as well in the mask fight there is even though like the little James is there like a, a lighting dip I will say probably the biggest facial change was Hoshwald in this situation so I'm glad that they touched upon that even though it wasn't even that bad in in the first place i will say that having harsh world look even sexier than normal is pretty cool also to add on the grammy versus compachi fight one thing that i think a lot of people really wanted for some reason and i kind of get it in its weird strange way is when Grammy does the kind of galaxy black hole thing. There was like, there was a little bit of stars and it was like, oh, okay. But in the Blu-ray, you kind of get, you get more stars, you get more details in the sky when there's like a hole open that can, uh, you know, that, that you can see on screen right now. Of course, more particles as Grammy's summoning as well. And also the shading towards when Grammy is in his like light form, when the brain kind of pops out of his head. The lighting actually gives more detail to Grammy's face out is usually too bright to kind of make out what you're looking at like especially the eye in one of the shots is like so bright that like you can't see the detail of like where he's even looking right so again lighting plays a massive part and on top of that did they change the meteorite scene yes they made the meteorite bigger which is always a massive w right massive so i would like to talk about one of my personal favorites, which is episode 21, which is Ichigo versus the Bambis, right? And the reason why I want to talk about this is because obviously not only was it an anticipated episode by everyone's standards, right? It's like Ichigo is coming back, right? He's coming back after this long training arc. It was kind of, you know, well wanted. Now let's talk about this episode. As you can see, I'm just going to post the GIFs or, or the images on screen as I just waffle. But they did do some really good improvements, especially with the lightning effects. Well, I guess it was just an effects diff in general. When you see like the lightning or the light still coming out of the belt buckles of like the arrows of the Quinter Girls. There is also like a correction on Latota's face on one of them. Candice gets a little bit of a correction too. Zenbonzaka corrections, character corrections, as you can see. You get a little bit of shadow differences within the Quinter Girl transformation i think the one thing that i do like is like the little sparks added between ichigo and meninas is like hand-to-hand -hand sword battle and of course you get to see like a candice facial uh, fix as well as like uh, meninas having her wings in the tv version she didn't and the kind of i forgot what it's called but the the bear trap thing that Litoto did there's corrections on that as well i wouldn't have noticed it but animators did so fair play i respect it now i'm going to show you some screenshots that i personally like the most and i went out my way to get like the high detailed ones because one thing that really frustrated me about the quincy girls versus ichigo and maybe it's just me but 
I I really m- most people did, couldn't couldn't stand it because of some weird like you know it, it, there was some fluidity that people expected to be there and that's fine I get that but the one thing that bothered me the most and to be honest throughout this core in general is that it's really hit and miss sometimes uh, depending on who who the fight is it looks okay but there was something about. Ichigo versus the Bambis that really drove my fucking gears and that was the blindness of the lighting effects. Some lighting effects were just so over the top or oversaturated that like there was so much detail within the lights of the wings or sometimes the, the arrows that the explosions that it all looked like a blurred mess like there was so much noise going on that it just fused into this blurry mesh of just nothing and when it came to the blu-rays i'm showing like comparisons now right you actually see Kampachi's body you get to see the detail actually get hit you actually get to see you know a very clean shot and and not like um, maybe it was a tv version because you know people might get like you know the epileptic fits and they do that like dimming maybe that's why but even so it's like even look at the soul reapers here it's like when this is happening really quick on screen it's very overbearing to look at i think you know that th- they do this to stop people from having the epileptic fits and whatnot but i think it actually hurts your brain even more look at this candace picture throwing an attack at compachi right look at how much detail is lost in the tv version and this bothered me because it was like who's candace hitting here obviously i know it's compachi we know it's compachi because of the context right but it's like if i was to show somebody this still shot here they wouldn't even know like like oh i've got to look at the black bit the black bit doesn't even look like a figure of anything it just looks like it's part of the 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 electric itself but then you look at the blu-ray and it's like oh okay there's actually a figure there and there was also an issue with ghosting as well with in the tv version which again ghosting getting fixed i love it but it was another problem that just added to my viewing experience when it came to episode 21 in general and you can see perfectly here i got it just perfectly where you could see the ghosting and um the what it was originally supposed to look like so that bothered me quite greatly because it took away from the impact and you can see it as well as ichigo versus minus here with the spark effects and which again doesn't look like a complete microsoft paint paintbrush and then just squiggled everywhere so there's actually a bit of depth going on here and i quite like that and again in this shot as well like added little particle effects are quite nice as well and ichigo is getting a full a full panty view we love to see it for some reason there's a big bright light in this title card don't know why it got removed that's pretty cool and of course uh, one of the (laughs) you know i'm a male you know i'm a lad just like the rest of you are. But to be able to see Ichigo in the back and not so much interference of just blurred green light. There's actually detail in the Blu-ray. You can see there's, there's detail. This is one of the things that annoyed me about the TV version is that where's all these like little sparkling and all these like textured wobbly effects in, in the lightning. I can actually see it now. And, and you can see this really obnoxious like white light towards the i want to say the, the 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 right of like the lightning like i can actually see like the different dark greens and light greens and and sometimes there's like this obnoxious white light it's got to be dimming surely but we get to see candace's ass and we get to see the detail of the ripples of those shorts and thank you thank you piro thank you for fixing that and then of course you can see latoto's face uh, more cleaned up here but that's the main thing i wanted to talk about for that episode because i will say that i thoroughly enjoyed watching episode 21 more than i did the tv version because it was a bit of a headache like physically on the eyes to watch it induced just color blur to me and it just was not a good episode to experience like the hype was then it was nice to watch when there was no vol standing wings or no like you know massive light attacks but when it got to that part it was just kind of like oh well, everything's being masked by blur and now in no particular order, I'm just going to go through some of these screenshots. As you can see, there's a few of Weisel. Nothing really kicking off here, just a few changes with Yuha and Ichibei's like kind of like cut screen. A little bit of extra detail on like the shadows of, of Weisel. 
and some very good detail on the rocket going up it gives a sense of like speed and also air resistance so i quite like that a lot actually it seems minimal to some people I quite appreciate it. Another one with Biaki versus Robert, not really much kicking off here, just effects, shading, increase, and also a little bit of detail on Shuhei's sword, which is quite nice as well. Then we got onto Giselle, Bambietta versus Mayori. Again, I don't really want to talk about this too much because I'm just going to complain that they didn't use Zombie Bambietta's Volstandig. It's just a wasted opportunity. I didn't like it. I mean, Everything else pretty bog standard, nothing nothing too fantastical here, I suppose. And then, of course, a big one, too, over here is that we've got, you know, some decent lighting changes, as as stated before, but Orihime had, had a glow up. Surprisingly, I think this is, next to the Hosh World one, I would say that this is probably the biggest um, improvement. Not that it was bad, but it's like, when you when you look at it, it's like, oh, okay, th yeah, th they really fixed up on that. And uh, yeah, I would say Orihime definitely had a glow up right here, and uh, it looks so much better. Not for the horny reasons either then we get on to the last episodes the ones that really matter i suppose you could say to everything that's going on i really do like latoto's bruise being fixed on her face it wasn't bleeding but more so a bruise and the lighting as well with like robert getting absolutely diffed in front of her uh, that was good as well like looking at the the color change actually is very noticeable the impact of yuha getting pushed uh, through the air resistance again always very nice and there's a little correction with Uryu's top of the head again nothing too special Senjimaru's umbrella more detail we get to see some blood removed from Askin some like more accuracy as well Namaya's what, 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 what do you call it like a body warmer I, I forgot what it's called like a body vest warmer thing puffer jacket it can never get it, it can never catch a break I swear every every time in like core one and now in core two this motherfucker's puffer jacket always takes somewhat of an L but hey they fix it and I appreciate it. Same again for this as well. I would say the biggest change is probably in the Myers' blade being the whole wobbly effect. They fixed that in the Blu-ray. Not that it was ever noticeable, but again, the appreciation is there. And now we get onto like the last, I think this is the last episode now, where it, it's surprising how I didn't even notice. And I don't think many people did notice that a lot of the wings weren't adaptated in a lot of these fights. We just kind of, I, I, we just kind of assume, right? Even the patterns of like the symbols on their heads got changed as well and it's like oh okay did they need to fix like the bindings on gerard when senjimaru's like pinned him down i mean i wouldn't have noticed but again it's a nice touch that didn't need to be done but they went out their way to do it and i appreciate stuff like that but looking at the past scenes and seeing that they did have wings and then seeing that they didn't i didn't even recognize that i guess my brain automatically filled in the blank so to be able to see them go out their way to fix that is quite nice there's not really a big change in this batch either besides obviously like namaya's puffer jacket again and then in this one we get to see more of the line that is drawn with ichibei and yuha which again i wouldn't have noticed so it's little intricate details like that which is quite nice and again adding those raindrop effects very taguchi like and then when it comes to senjumara's bankai all i can say is light and diff and just detail diff there's nothing really too over dramatic here that is like game changing for some reason lilay Barra's wings are like half drawn in one of these shots here and as well i do want to say um askins uh there was like this yellow uh, not yellow this green poison thing that like tanjiro was like standing on and i was like i always did find that a bit weird i didn't question it but i was like oh well like poison and i guess green is kind of toxic i was like maybe that's a vol standard thing i didn't really question it but i i honestly it did bother me a little bit but to see that it's now been changed to purple oh that makes so much more sense and i'm low-key glad that that's actually fixed like and you can see it as well in this screenshot too where like karinji is again stepping on it and it's green it's gone to purple you can see panida's eyes are glowing and you can see like the tree branches from hikifune i've also got this nice uh, more detail on it and then senjima versus Gerard uh, again the lighting changed as well which makes sense again all these things just make sense and then we get on to Ichibei versus Yuha the biggest change I guess to some people is like the more black pieces within this sketch are more like painted white uh, or more filled in paint bucket filled in uh, they remove the pupils from Ichibei's eyes as well and that's really it my overall thoughts on this blu-ray on a correction level and it has to be on a correction level because that's what this video is about it's not as big as core one which 
can be seen as a good thing because Core One did have a lot of you know facial features and things that it did need to fix. I do still believe or stand on the the, the stance that in terms of like animation and in terms of detail, it has improved from Core One. Yeah, we didn't get uh, an episode six and we didn't get an episode seven, right? Whatever you want to call it. But what we did have was consistency in the art department. Hopefully, now that there's consistency in the art department and the animators have gotten used to these character designs, etc., etc., now we can kind of increase the animation more when it comes to Call 3, but I don't want to get into that. It, was it good? Some of these corrections, you know, when it comes to my overall review of Core 2, which I will do because I was waiting on the Blu-ray to come out, I am a little bit disappointed when you see what JJK did with the Sukuna fight with m m m m m m whatever his name is. I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't remember it to save the life of me. Uh, I understand understand that that episode wasn't finished and it was already just like finishing what you already started and I know that a lot of these episodes was finishing you're just going back and you're correcting some things I get that that's the contextual difference but in saying that the ability that you have to be able to create a Sukuna versus Mahogaho right the ability that you can do that much and add scenes on that Blu-ray within that time limit, you should be able to, in theory, put that time towards adding extra content towards Shinji's Bankai. I know that you, you've acknowledged it, you added some effects, that's pretty cool, right? Good for you, happy for you. But you could a Bankai is supposed to be an iconic moment. When people look at Shinji's Bankai as an iconic moment, it's not there. It's not iconic at all. It's just a thing that just happened. It's not cool. And of course, there's many other problems too, such as like the soy fun thing where uh, that uh, she's hitting BG9. Why couldn't you have done it like BBS? The I'm not asking for a big like Sukuna versus Mahaga Raga Raga Raga's fight, right? I'm not asking for like that much extension. I'm asking for two to three seconds of extra animation of like Shinji's Bankai and also Soy from punching BG9 and making it look impactful. Just copy Bleach Brave Souls. They literally did all the legwork for you. Just do that camera angle. Do that same one second punch in an animated form. It's really, I would like to say not that hard, it probably is hard, but in, you're experienced animators, you can do it, right? There's little quips like that that I don't like, and they had the ability to make this a more marketable Blu-ray. Do I still think it's worth the money? Of course, I do feel like it's a good product. I do feel like some of the corrections are fantastic in their own way, but it seems more it's an editor correction rather than an animator correction in most of these things. I think it's like Zach Productions who do like the, mu not the music, but they do uh, m more so like the lighting and all that kind of stuff. So it seems like they've edited and fixed a lot of the issues for the majority of the part. But besides me getting into the whole review of Bleach Core 2, I will say that they are nice additions. It does look a little bit better. That I always appreciate that they go out their time to, to, to fix this for us. And it is a more definitive product and I, I, I see the vision. I, I can watch it. But the majority of me watching this Blu-ray, I really didn't walk away watching this whole Blu-ray really noticing anything. It took thousands of eyes from Twitter to compile all these images and these comparisons, including myself, just to go, yeah, okay, that's slightly different, but th there's nothing, there's nothing mind-boggling. So you're not really buying this Blu-ray for, you know, the, the the exclusivity of corrections. You're also buying it for the interviews and just supporting your series in general, which is a good thing. But I'm glad that they were able to fix some lighting issues because I do feel like there were a problem. And yeah, I am disappointed in Bleach Core too. I am, but I also understand that a lot of animators, in comparison to Core 1, weren't at their strongest. This is probably the weakest Core. If I'm being a little bit honest, it's a little bit less ambitious, except for like the last two episodes and maybe episode 21. And that's mainly because Kubo had his like leg in it, like really like he contributed a lot. Again, disappointed in the whole Bambi thing. A lot of missed opportunities here, like a genuinely a lot of missed opportunities. We won't even talk about that last thing credits with Khan. And I guess with like uh, Sakai being like very ill, we had Hashimoto retiring uh, last year because he got diagnosed with cancer, I believe. I believe, please don't quote me on that. It was just a tweet that I saw from him. Could have been a translation diff, but we know he is retired and he was like a big effects guy and he was a big uh, character uh, designer guy, not designer, but like a char character animator guy. He's off the team now. He's retired. Sakai was sick or injured. 
I think halfway through production. I think I think this call was a bit nerfed from the get go. I still have a lot of great things to say about it, but I will save it for my overall thoughts and review before call three comes out. So here's some comparisons. What do you think? What is your favorite? What do you like the most? And with that being said, I'm gonna catch my focus out. You guys, of course, have this fine day. Be the handsome as always, people. Peace out.